G, yeah. um, in a recent interview, yeah, shit, I did an interview. Uh, Steven Espinosa um, comes out and he talks about uh, the negotiations with Black Prime in regards to Terrence Crawford and Jerron Ennis. Yeah. He explained why. He explained why the the talks with Black Prime never um, never materialized anything further than that one conversation. Yeah. And you know, then he says that Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence were focused on each other. Right. Do you think that that's the reason why they, the Boots and Crawford talks didn't go past Espinosa's conversation with? Um, with Terrence Crawford after he spoke to Black Brown? Yeah, because it got it got to do with their their schedule. You know what I mean, it's what they want to see. It's, it's what makes sense. What makes sense to them still is Crawford versus Spence. And I, th- I believe that fight won't happen. Um, I think it should happen. You know what I mean? Like a lot of a lot of people like to get caught up in the ducking talk, but it ain't that. It's just I mean the schedules go how they go. Now, he also said that they really never stopped negotiating. But, indeed, it took a break when he had his fight with David right. Avenesian. But after that, talks picked up. So yeah. they have been in contact, in constant contact this whole time. Yeah. And I think it's going to happen. You just try to see out of eye. You know what I mean? I, I, I believe it's going to happen. It, it, it got to happen. It got to happen. That's a great fight. You know what I mean? Espinosa don't want to make that mistake, and PBC don't want to make that mistake. Uh, Crawford don't want to make that mistake. You know what I mean? They don't want to mistake, make that mistake or not having that fight not happen. You know what I mean, so it's going. Yeah. So Spence has about sixty something days left to either fight Jerron and to vacate the title. Yeah. What's the likelihood that that fight gets made before then, and then he ends up? Win or lose, if he wins, vacating the title, maybe moving up, or if he loses to Crawford, you know, can you see that happening for undisputed a second time, or is the belts going to disperse and they just going to do it again without the belts? I think they're going to fight, they're going to disperse, go to 54, join that free fall at 54, and probably do it again, and let Boots have 47, then Boots will come up and join the free fall. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a free fall at 54, so that's what I think. At 154, it's a lot of work. There. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. A lot of intriguing fights. Um, Danny Garcia up there, he wants some trouble. Might get a rematch out of him and Spence. Once he go up to 54, you might get. Yeah, it's so many fights. You can get Crawford and Lubin. Like it's it's so many. It's so many fights up there, bro. I don't really see them sticking around at 47. They get older, they don't want to keep making 47. They want to get some of that 54 money. 54 open. You know I'm saying? It's not open because Charlo holding it down, but Charlo going to probably go up to 60. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's going to be a free fall at 54. I like it, though. Tim Zoot doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of names up there. Fundora doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? A lot of little sneaky names up there. Mm. Terrell Goucher still around. He might get over on somebody. You never know. You know what I'm saying? So, let's see what happens. Ocampo had a good showing with Fundora. He did. You know what I'm saying? Might get the Earl Spence rematch at 54. Well, that was a competitive You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of shit could go, could, go, could go down. So, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean?